everyone. So Kyrie Irving showed why he is just an incredible talent, right? Kyrie Irving absolutely torched the Lakers 38 points and followed that with six rebounds, six assists, uh, and just could not be stopped, right? 14 to 23 from the field, five of nine from three, five of five from the free throw line. Uh, just again, absolutely incredible. And of course, Kyrie Irving has a lot of questions, right? Is he going to stay with the Dallas Mavericks? Uh, is he going to end up leaving and going to the Lakers? Do the Lakers work out a sign and trade? What ends up happening, right? The Lakers and Kyrie Irving were have been glued together since the offseason, right? Of Kyrie Irving, all the rumors, all the speculation, the whole summer, Kyrie's coming, it's happening, you know, all that. We know the stories, and it ended up not happening, right? They go into the season, all just kind of fades away a little bit. Kyrie gets in some trouble. It's just, you know, the soap opera that continues. And then, boom, out of nowhere, Kyrie Irving becomes available again, requests a trade, and it's like, boom, here's our opportunity. The Lakers are going to go get Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving's coming to Lakers. Kyrie Irving is going to save the day. Let's go. Let's do it. And he ends up getting traded to the Dallas Mavericks because the Nets, uh, Joe Sy, the owner, did not want to trade him where he wanted to go. And it was more of a spite thing that just the trade kind of didn't really make sense. Um, it made sense that they were going to keep KD because that's what they said. Like, oh, hey, we did this trade because we're going to keep Kevin Durant. Lo and behold, they end up trading Kevin Durant to the Phoenix Suns. So the Lakers end up missing out on Kyrie Irving. But it wasn't all bad. The Lakers end up getting a really nice trade and a really nice return. Get that added depth, get some defense, get some shooting, get everything. And it was like, okay, cool. Like, this is this is great. Like, this is better than Kyrie Irving, right? Lakers got depth. Lakers got talent. They got their third guy in D'Angelo Russell who can provide a lot of what Kyrie can. Not to the elite level of Kyrie, but a guy that can be a three-level scorer. A guy that can get to the hoop, that can play make, that can shoot off the ball, can shoot on the ball, shoot from the three-point range. Like D'Angelo Russell, great pickup, great addition. But at the end of the day, it's still Kyrie Irving. Now, the only real conceivable way I really think Kyrie Irving could come to the Lakers is if uh, Kyrie Irving was to do a sign-and-trade or the you know, the, the Dallas Mavericks were to do a sign and trade. Uh, maybe you do that for D'Angelo Russell, just trade D'Lo, double sign and trade. Boom. Everybody wins. They get something. We get Kyrie. You add Kyrie to this roster. You're probably the best team in the league, right? With Kyrie Irving, Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley, you know, you'd have uh, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, like, it doesn't get much better than that. Or you could have Beasley come off the bench and start Austin Reeves. You got combinations. Because, again, you got depth, right? Uh, or the other alternative is, like, maybe you package that. Maybe you try to keep D'Angelo Russell and, and package uh, a couple guys, right? I mean, the Dallas Mavericks, they would have a full max contract if they were to let Kyrie Irving go. The Lakers have two first-round picks, so maybe they do something where you know they sign and trade for whatever Mo Bamba, uh, Day, you know Davon Reed, and uh, let's say Malik Beasley, right? Who are all on non-guaranteed deals, and then the Mavs could just waive all those guys and get two first-round picks out of it, right? That's another alternative. Point is that there's options, but we are getting reports that the Lakers aren't even interested in Kyrie anymore. And this is what is going on. While appearing on Hoops Hype podcast, uh, Jovan Buha, uh, Buha reported that Lakers made an offer to the Nets for Irving, but ultimately felt like they were asking for too much, especially given the uncertainty that tends to follow Irving. So Brooklyn decided to deal him to the Mavericks. Meanwhile, Los Angeles made some big moves at the trade deadline themselves and have been playing well ever since then, even with the absence of LeBron James due to the right foot injury. Uh, he also added, uh, from what I've been told by my sources around the organization, they want to run this situation, the current roster, back. It looked uh, good so far. They've won a lot of games. They've done a lot of winning without LeBron James. That's something that's kind of been under-discussed. Uh, the non-LeBron minutes uh, were always an issue for the Lakers going back to the first year in L.A., also added, from what I've been told, they're not going to pursue Kyrie Irving this offseason. Of course, that could change. To my knowledge and to what I've been told, the Kyrie ship, I think, has sailed. You never want to say never. That could easily change. But as of right now, their plan is to run this back. Now, 
personally, I don't buy it. Um, I don't think that they're as desperate to go get Kyrie Irving as they once were. But LeBron James, you know, it has this fondness and love for Kyrie. Kyrie seems to have the same thing for LeBron James. I do not see a scenario where Kyrie Irving doesn't go to the Lakers if he truly becomes available. And it just seems like a Laker thing to do, right? And it almost seems like that, what is it, like the white elephant or whatever, you know, the thing that's just like, it. it's right there, you want it, It's it, you keep trying to grab it, it's at your grasp and it doesn't happen. Like what could have been with Kyrie? And it's just that if you, if you ended up going and trading for Kyrie, you probably could still keep Jared Vanderbilt, Austin Reeves, guys like that. Like you would still be in a very good position, right? You'd still have like a lot of your core guys, Rui Hachimura, you'd be you'd be set. You'd arguably be the best team in the league. Now, there's still a lot of questions with Kyrie Irving, still a lot going on. Um, but a couple things like does if this doesn't work out this season, does Kyrie want to stay? Um, does Dallas want that to happen? Like even from day one, like the whole Dallas trade was kind of just like, hey, we get to move off some salary. We didn't have to really give up any major assets. The only thing that they really lost was uh, Finney Smith, which they could easily go and maybe replace in this offseason with a max contract. Uh, they they have options. Like this just gave Dallas flexibility for the future and it kind of bought them time with Luka. Right. It was like, hey, you know, um, you want a star? We're going to get you a star. Here's your star. Didn't work out. Don't worry, Luca. We'll go get you another star. Right. That kind of thing. It just it's it's a it's a win win for the Dallas Mavericks. However, you shake it and you have a team like the Lakers who would probably be willing to give up both first round picks uh, that they would have this offseason to go get Kyrie Irving. Right, so you could get, like I said, you could get a D'Angelo Russell if you want a guy like to be the second guy next to Luca, or if you're like, hey, we don't really want D'Lo, just go get some guys that you can wave and get and get, basically get your assets back. Right, that's what you could do, and it's a win-win for everybody, and everyone's right in the world. Right, that could be the option. Um, now, I just think that in this off season, personally, I don't really think they should go that route. I think if you're going to make a trade and you're going to make a move, take you could take like Beasley and Mo Bamba and you know Davon Reed and whomever, take these expiring deals or these non-guaranteed deals and just go retool, right? You know, go get just throwing names out there, not saying that this will happen or it'll even be an option. So don't take this too literal. Um, but like, let's say for whatever, let's say Buddy Hill to Miles Turner on the table again, right? And you can get them for one first, right? Well, now you could go and go, okay, well, we'd have Jared Vanderbilt, we'd have Anthony Davis, we'd have LeBron James, and we'd have D'Angelo Russell. Let's take, you know, Beasley and turn him into Buddy Heald and Mo Bumba into, into uh, you know, Miles Turner, and we'll give up the first, or we'll give up both first. You know, maybe give up both first, whatever. Maybe you could work out a deal like that. I think that that would be a better route than going and getting Kyrie. Um Obviously, again, if you can get Kyrie Irving, it just I it's something that the Lakers would do. I would not be upset about it, right? Like whether you trade D'Lo or keep D'Lo, not going to be upset about getting Kyrie Irving. Come on, it's Kyrie Irving. But I just think that the hoops that you would have to go through in order to get Kyrie makes things very difficult, right? Because one, you'd be hard capped, which means now if you trade D'Lo you're basically going to have to like rework Beasley and Mo Bamba and several other guys, probably letting Dave on go. It's just like, you, you gotta try to figure out a way to make it make sense. And it just becomes very difficult. We'll dive into that more in the off season. Cause you know that there's going to be reports, you know that there's going to be news about it. Uh, it's just how it goes. But I just, I don't know. I look at this roster and I really like the idea of running it back because you run it back with this roster. You have the entire rest of this season. You have all of the off season. You have training camp, a full training camp. You have a entire preseason, and then you have all of next season to then try to go and compete and contend for a championship. Which, if this roster was on, this was the Lakers roster from day one. We would be at worst, probably like the fourth or fifth seed, you know, if not better, right? Because I mean, this 
roster is good. This roster is talented. You have LeBron James. You have Anthony Davis. And again, you can retool, rework whatever you need to. You, you know, you if you can upgrade Beasley, then you upgrade Beasley. If you can upgrade, you know, a couple pieces, you upgrade a couple pieces. Whatever. Keep your core guys, right? Keep your Rui. Keep your Vanderbilt. Keep your Davis, LeBron. You know, Austin Reeves. Uh, keep D'Lo unless you can turn him into something major. You know, maybe a Bradley Beal or something like that becomes available. There's talks about Trey Young. You know that there's just it's the Lakers and the off season and open market and all that stuff. You know that there's going to be all kinds of the rumor mills, um, which from a content creator standpoint is is a is a wonderful thing. But it is one of those things of like what's reality, like what can really happen, what can't. I don't believe for a second that Kyrie Irving is off of the Lakers' radar. I just don't buy it. You know, I mean, even Jovan Buha is like, well, you know, things could change. Yeah, because I don't even think he believes that. I don't think there's a person that believes that, period. If Kyrie wants to go to Lakers, I'm pretty sure that the Lakers will do whatever it takes to go get Kyrie Irving. That's just, again, the Lakers, they love to star chase. They love to star hunt. Um, and if they have an opportunity to get a guy like a Kyrie Irving, I think they they do what they have to do to make it happen. Um, but you know, we'll see. I mean, it also is gonna what what happens in Dallas. Um, you know, does does Kyrie look at it and go, well, you know, hey, like what what can we do for a full season, right? Like this is the kind of deal. Like it's just kind of me. Well, now Dallas can retool, and we can kind of figure it out, and maybe get some guy. You know, like does he look at it as like let me stay in Dallas? Does Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks do they actually want to uh, keep him and give him and pay him because he wants a max? Um, he's, I mean, you know, I mean, after you look at that Lakers game, there's no way you look at that and go, yeah, he ain't worth a max. He is, you know, but there's a lot of questions just surrounding him and him taking days off and him just kind of uh, being unreliable at times and all the mess that went on with the Brooklyn Nets. It just really painted this picture. Uh, but with the Lakers, it, it, you look at it and you go, okay, well, they have LeBron James. You know, Kyrie has this fondness for LeBron. LeBron has this fondness for Kyrie. They've made it work and won a championship before. They could do it again. Yeah, I mean, even from a business standpoint, it's like it's box office, it's ticket sales, it's all kind, it's everything that you can want. Jersey sales, all that stuff. So I just I, I don't buy it. But ideally, I would like to keep this Lakers roster. I would. Like at least, like I said, at least the core guys, you know, your Rui, your Vanderbilt, uh, D'Lo, Reeves, LeBron, AD. Um, at least keep those guys intact. Uh, maybe keep Schroeder because I still think he's a solid backup point guard. Um, you know, I, I I don't really think he's a starting guy, but I do think he's one of the better backup point guards in the league. Keep him, and then like I said, if you can turn Mo Bamba and Beasley and Davon and whomever else, if you can turn them into like upgrades or you know just more consistent players, I guess then sure, why not? Um, but. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think, uh, do you believe and buy this report that Kyrie is not going to come to Lakers? Um, you know, I mean, I think that this was just a report that was put out. Because, I mean, this report from the other day. Uh, I think this is just a report that's just like, hey, Kyrie's playing the Lakers, and this is the last time, so let's make a report about it. That's kind of what this feels like. I feel like they just made this report just to kind of like, you know, suck up some of the Kyrie Lakers, you know, views. It's kind of how I look at it, but love to hear your thoughts and opinions. So let me know however you feel down in the comments below.